Alright guys, what I have for you today is a video on how to change out the temperature blend door actuator that controls the heat from cold to hot and that's for all the vents, both sides, on a standard setup where it's manual temp control. For auto temp control, dual temp control setups like this one, um, this actuator is behind the radio only controls the passenger side vents whereas the driver side vents are controlled by another actuator on dual climate control setups like this one and that one's way buried down here um, under the dash there and I have a whole video on how to get to that one if you need to and do it without pulling the whole dash out in the process also this truck does not have a center console flow through console here so if yours has a flow through console Reference my other video on how to get to this lower one because that one had navigation I believe and everything and that one had a nice flow through console on so that shows how to get rid of that console so you can get to um, all your trim pieces on here and get this out also. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure the key is off and then we're going to pull our lizards and poisonous frogs from up here and get them out of the way. And then there's a little trim panel right here, it's like a little rubber mat and we're just going to pry that up and out of there, just kind of sets in a groove in there so it should come out pretty easy. You can see how flexible it is. Put that up there. And then there's two 7mm bolts, one here and one here. Make sure you don't lose your screws, put them up here. And then we're going to pull these two side trim panels off because they overlap this center one on here. So don't go start trying to pry this puppy out of here. Get these two off first. And we're not going to take this one off. I'm going to show you a little trick on this one because this one, this one requires half the dash to come off. It's a real pain. Whereas this one just kind of pries off of here, no screws required. And you start down here and you just start pulling up on it. The very bottom down here and then you work it with your hand all the way up. And you see how it keeps coming out like that? Little by little, you get to those retainers. Now the actual cluster over here, the, the finish panel for the cluster right here, overlaps it just a little bit, so you just pull on that. This, this uh, trim panel right here, pull it up a little bit down here, and then we can continue pulling this out of here. And just be careful and go slow so we're not, you know, marring up the, the vehicle. And then you get it down. And there's a connector for right here. This one does not have 4x4. If you have 4x4, your connector would be right here. Either way, there is a connector back there. So that's what you're hanging up on. And then you can put this to the side so it doesn't get damaged. All right, next thing we're going to do is get this media hub for the sink system out of here because behind it is a 7 millimeter bolt that holds in the bottom part of this front control interface module we need to pull off. So the best way to get to this, because it's in here really tight and it's kind of flush all the way around here, is to actually open your little compartment door down here and then get your cat claw, same thing, and go behind it. And there's two large connectors behind there. And we're going to go on the back side of them and pull this way so it pops out of there and it comes right out without gouging or scratching anything and then you could just disconnect your connectors for USB and audio jacks and that will go to the side and then there's that little seven millimeter screw we're going to take that out now let's see I don't want to lose it and now comes the fun part this side trim panel right here we have to be ultra careful. We're going to pop it. There's no screws holding it in except for behind the airbag. We don't want to pull the airbag and the rest of the dash. So what we're going to do, this whole thing is loose right now. We're going to pop this, pop this, because this is all push connectors then, after this point, and we're going to get this out of here, sneak it past this trim panel inside here. I'm going to try to demonstrate it. Hopefully it doesn't get all dark in here from the lights. But basically this thing, like I said, just pulls out. Okay, top and bottom now, we're all loose. And same thing with this. I have to get the old cat claw in here up top and start popping these connectors. Just kind of pry out on a little bit. And you can start down here also like the other side. Just be careful. Just 
kind of help it up. And then up here it's popped already. And you can basically use our hands for almost all of this. This way we're not scratching this fine finish panel on here. So you can see how it's out just enough over here. We're not going to crack anything. We're not going to break anything. It's very strong. And you can see this thing. All I got is over here. So we'll pull out on this side now. Pop it down there. And then we'll sneak it past. Because like I said, this overlaps this. It's meant to be that way for NVH reasons. We just got to move it out of the way enough. See that right there? And same thing down here. It's just a little bit hard for me to do it being off to the side so you guys can see. Otherwise, it's very simple. There it is. All you got now, you just look in the back side here. You got a bunch of connectors. Just start disconnecting them all. It's got little tangs on them. Push them down. They fall right out. different kinds. One's down here. Your sink ones come through the hole here. And of course your cigarette light, your power point. And this whole thing goes up to the side. And that way we avoided taking this off and everything else. You're just going to damage stuff. At this point, just pull the radio out, 7 millimeter, two on each side. And then that'll slide out. More connections in the back. They're all connectors. Quick connect. And all these 7mm bolts I'm taking out, they're all the same length and thread pitch, everything. So it makes it kind of easy for when you go back to the other. Take those four out. Give them a little wiggle because it does clip into there a little bit. And there's just a bunch of connections in the back side here. Got two big gray connectors. Like these ones, and then this one's satellite, and then this one is regular um, AM and FM. Grab by this black part. Don't grab by the metal or the orange back. You'll be yanking on it forever. This is kind of like a release for it. Pulling the black part, and that'll get it out. And you can see a bunch of connections now. Now, down in there, I'll move the camera. You can see the actuator, but it's kind of buried on the last bolt, and that's where our arm comes in over here uh, through the glove box, and I'll show you that also. So I'm just going to get all these connections out of the way, whatever way I can, so we're not fighting them or fighting bolts that tight space inside the dash cavity there. Just get them all out of the way. Any way you can. These things are very robust. You're not going to ruin anything. Just kind of tuck them out of the way. And once you get the radio out of the way, you'll see it right away. It's right here. And we're going to get off the connector first. Same thing. Use a cat claw. It does have that little red tang on it. And then there's a, a regular black Clip on it on top, and then that'll be out of the way. Get so we'll get to this front one right here first, and then we'll start attacking that back one. And you can see they come out very easy, it's just the access to them. Okay, so to get to that back bolt on the actuator, we're going to stick our arm through the glove box here. So we're going to get the glove box down, you open it up, and you take the sides and you squeeze in on them, both sides. And I'll get these little uh, bumpers past it, and then it'll simply go all the way down to the floor. Now once you get the glove box open, look up in here to the left by the actuator. And right here is big old harness. We're going to disconnect that from the frame of the instrument panel here and get that out of the way and we're going to move some of these, these other wires out of the way and we're going to jam our arm through here to get back in there and uh, get to that bolt and now you can see with this harness disconnected from two spots here and over here we can move it around and up and out of the way and then we have plenty of room to get up in there 
Now, as far as getting that back bolt back there, it's a real pain to get back in there with any kind of uh, sockets or even my special little tool that I use for all these actuators. It does not fit in there between the head of the bolt and the frame of the dash here. Um, only way it would really get in there without making a custom tool like I have is an 8mm open end wrench. Go through uh, the glove box back there, something like this and you get in there and you put your hand here kind of guide it turn and just keep going now after a few short turns with the open end side like when I have a gear wrench right here see this you're actually going to be able to fit that head on top of the um, the bolt back there you'll be able to move the actuator enough and the bolt moves a little bit and you'll be able to push down with this finger and then ratchet from inside the box here it'll come out and then you can kind of finish it with your fingers something like this and then you can get it out of there Ooh, that's a tight one and then after that, that's the easy part, is getting it actually out of here. Just lift straight up and off. All right, so going back in, it's the same thing. Just line up the teeth on here. There's little splines on here. And I'm going to come through the glove box just for video reasons. You'd, normally, you'd go through the um, radio area here to get it in here. So you first thing you do is take it and you find your splines. See how it fell right in? Then you move the door wherever you need to so that all the holes line up. Mainly the one right back here, there's a cross back there and that one's going to line everything up for you. There it goes. A little tank for the cross back here came right through and of course this one lines up. So in this front one, we're just going to snug it up so it holds the actuator in place so it's not flopping around. Get it tightened down a little bit. It's already lined up in the back with the cross and all that. We're going to keep it there. And then we're going to have to use two hands to get that rear... Uh, screw back in there. We're going to have to come through the front here and kind of hold our fingers and mainly through the back and get it dropped down in the hole here. But even my fingers, they can't reach it, so we're just going to have to reach over to it with the tips of our fingers. Kind of a little something like that. And then you guide it in with this side. We can at least get it down in the pocket and then go from there. We're in the hole now. We just need to start turning it by hand a little bit so that it starts biting so we don't lose it. Okay. Well, that's really hard to see. I'm sorry. But yeah. Okay. So you start biting into it. And like I said, use that gear wrench back there to get it you know, as far down as possible. Right? Until it starts losing contact. And use your finger. Put that downward pressure on there. You can at least get it down pretty far. If not, maybe even all the way. Depending on how exact the angle is, the screw's going in. And then you just need to finish it off with the open, like I said. I actually have two of these I'm doing today. I got another truck sitting right next to me. It needs the same actuator. That's just how common they are. Don't forget your electrical connectors. Same thing for your arm through the glove box. Easiest way, get it fully snapped in. Okay, and then the red tang. Push that in so it doesn't come loose. Let's get this harness plugged back in up here to the frame of the dash. With those two points we took out earlier to make it loose. And it should push back in pretty far. There we go. And then the other one's over here. 
get that back in. There we go. Right there and right here. And then we're all done the glove box area, so let's close it up. Same thing, push these tangs in, get them past, and close it. Now for assembly, it's basically reversal of removal, but I'll go through it just in case you guys want to watch all my tricks for getting stuff back in, where the wire locations are in case you forgot. This goes here. This is all for our radio. Got the connections back out here for everything. First thing we're going to do is put the radio back in. So we're going to do our connections for that, find all those. Bunch of gray connectors. Not that one. Plug our satellite and antenna back in. Okay. Get these out of the way. And this whole thing simply falls back into place. Make sure that's out of the way. It's got a little rubber stopper in the back there. This is all for the HVAC and sync, for the front control interface module. So I think we're good here. Start popping those seven millimeter screws back in. And the bottoms down here on this bracket have tangs on them, little nubs, and they'll, uh, they'll self align. So you wanna make sure that those are fully engaged so that it aligns it before you start putting any of these screws in. And like I said, all these seven millimeter screws are all the same. So you just get a pile, and back together it goes. So the next thing we're gonna install is the front control interface module. This sucker right here. So we're gonna put our cigarette lighter, PowerPoint connector back in, and we're gonna get, where is it at? That one, the USB and the audio jack wire for the sink coming through the bottom slot on there. We're going to connect the HVAC, two big connectors up, they're color coded. Again, lined up, just make sure all these snap into place so we're not coming through here and doing it again or having problems trapped on the road or anything like that. This front control interface module wire in, it's right here, a little one. Try to get these puppies through. The top one's just stay out of the way for now. Get this bottom one through so it don't get smashed in there. And then, you can start aligning it over here and getting it back in and pulling this to the side. And once we get in a little bit further and we got all our maneuvering done, we can put these top two connectors in up here for this and this. Let's make sure this thing is loose. Okay, it is. Loose from down here, okay. And we're gonna start working it in there. Get these connectors going. We have enough room now. These should snap in also. Make sure they're not pinching. Okay. You can get the bottom in first down here. Because you don't want to scratch it right here. And then we'll concentrate on getting the top. And just get in there just like that and it'll pop past. Again, make sure this connector right here is coming through. And then you can start aligning. There's two tangs right here on top that stick out for those two screws up here. Make sure they're above this so they don't go underneath and get broken off on there. They'll slide right over it. And then literally, like you just saw, it'll just start snapping back into place. Everything should be aligned. It's flush up here. All our screw holes up here line up. Everything looks good, okay. Our two wires down here are coming through. We can start snapping this back in then. All the way down. Might as well get these two screws back in. Okay. And then 
down here that one screw we took out earlier. Put our little mat back on. Sticks in and then goes down. And it should kind of flush right out on there real nice like that. Put our lizards and poisonous frogs back. Get this connector for the 4x4 or the blank connector for the change right here in. There we go. Get it past here, get it past here. Watch what you're doing so you don't scratch anything. Start getting it lined up in here. And then we're going to pull this cluster trim panel out and away a little bit, just enough to get this one behind it. Okay, there we go, we're past it. And then we're gonna concentrate on snapping it in, get it down here first, like that. And then all these ones are straight on. Over here, just keep pushing that until everything snaps in. Then it's the same thing with the uh, cluster trim panel here. Okay, we're all good. Business cards are back in there. Now I need to find, there it is, this little sink module. I'm gonna plug the connectors back in. Should be like that, yeah, there you go. And this little one right here. Okay. We're gonna get this back into here. Just kind of push up in this bottom tang right here when you're pushing it in. Make sure everything else is lined up. That's going to kind of help it in there. You want to push the tangs in so nothing breaks. There we go. It snaps in really good. There's a lot of big tangs for that little meat hub on there. One last push. Make sure everything's flushed out the way it should look at the factory. And that is about it. Now the last thing you're going to want to do is recalibrate that new actuator you put in there. So we're going to pull fuse 15 from the fuse junction panel, uh, the central junction box inside of the car over there. Let it out for at least a minute, they say, five minutes, whatever. Plug that fuse 15 back into there, re, you know, put the cover back on over there. Put the key to the on position and just sit, let it sit for 30 seconds and the EMTC or DATC depending on what you have, module, uh, the climate control module, will calibrate that new actuator for us. Now the other vehicle I was talking about having to do the same actuator on is a 2011, whereas when we just did the whole video on was a 2010. 2011 was a big year for changes, engine-wise and otherwise, on the F-150s, and apparently this is a manual temp control, whereas the other one was a dual, but this one shows the top actuator, it's at a totally different angle, it's not back there anymore with that screw underneath this brace and the dash where it's hard to get to. The whole thing's on an angle, so the screw is right there, kind of out in the open. So I'm able to use my special tool that I have made up and get to it from the front here and kind of put it on there and ratchet it quite easy. It's a lot easier than the 2010s and probably the 2009s. Also what I noticed is this one, they want you to pull fuse 46 from the uh, fuse box down there. So I'll be listing the proper fuse for this actuator to reset it, the calibration on it, um, for each model year down in the description. We got the engine fully heated up so we can test it now from hot to cold, cold to hot. Listen for any noises and of course make sure we have hot air coming out the vents here. This one on the passenger side, it was stuck in the cold position and it's about 9 degrees out here right now so they definitely came in right away to get this fixed and yours is likely stuck in the cold position also right now. So we'll put it about 65. Make sure we got about ambient temp coming through the vents. There is going to be some residual heat in the box there. But you'll definitely notice it. Okay. And then we're going to change it over to 85. We're going to listen for noises. And we're, of course, going to be looking for that temperature change. Oh, yeah. Smoking hot now.